morning everyone welcome to every nation west coast it is so lovely to have you this morning and we hope that you are as excited as we are about what god has in store for us we pray that you are blessed and your spirit is lifted in his presence please do enjoy the service god, god bless, bless you, you. Good morning, church. We're so excited to be able to worship with you and praise. And we trust that you've had a great and really powerful prayer and fasting time this week. We're so excited to worship with you as we meditate on God's goodness and His greatness. We've got some amazing songs of praise and worship that declare God's power we're lifting up the name, the name above all names, and worshiping God as we just celebrate and submit to His sovereignty and acknowledge His power and His transcendence. Can you say amen to that? Amen.
Yes, Lord, we worship you and we praise you. It is so good to celebrate your name, to celebrate your power, Lord. We're so excited, Lord, to worship you today and just to celebrate your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace.
Shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Sing that one more time. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and we praise your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we consider your great name and we also worship you and praise you today for your sovereignty and your power. You're the same yesterday and today and forever, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All your decisions, everything that you think of, all that you do is true, is right, is just. We trust in you and we depend on you today. questions may abound but I stand upon your word and remember your unfailing love unfailing love and when the answers to my prayer the ones I thought I'd hear then the mystery of the cross brings perspective to my loss and tears and my fears just melt away Sovereign
Yes, Lord, lead us on, Lord, because we trust you. As your word says, we go from strength to strength, Lord, until we appear before you in glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you so much. Amen. Wow, thank you, Dave, and the worship team for great worship. It was so good to be in the presence of God, to declare his name in the heavenlies. I trust that your fast and your time of consecration has been a good one. I trust that you've heard from God. I trust that you've prayed. And we look forward to seeing God's answers to these prayers in 2021. It's going to be a good year. I have such a sense of God going to do incredible things in 2021. Now we gather together this morning around the Lord's table. And as we come before the Lord's table, I want us to quieten our hearts. And we're going to take a moment to consecrate our lives to Him. We're going to take a moment to remember everything that He has done for us. So let's go to the Word. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 26. The Word of God says, Now as they were eating... Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when, it, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you, in my Father's kingdom. So we come this morning before the Lord's Supper. And this is an important moment. So I'd encourage you, let's, as families gather together, as families, we take this moment. So we take the bread. And as we take the bread, we remember everything that God did in His body being broken for us. Let's take the bread together. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your body which you broke for us, Lord God. And Lord God, we come before you and we worship your name and we lift your name up high for everything you've done for us, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Now we take the cup. And as we take the cup, we remember the blood that Jesus shed for us. As we take the cup, we remember all that he did for us on the cross and how he gave himself up for us, for an abundance of life, for us to live fully as believers, for us to have salvation from sin, for us to live as he's called us to live. So let's partake of the cup this morning. Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your blood which you shed for us, Lord God for the redemption of our sins. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that even as we take your blood, Lord God, we plead your blood over every life in our community. We plead your blood, Lord God, over our lives, Lord God. And we once again consecrate our hearts and our minds and our bodies before you, Father. Lord God, you've done so much for us and we praise you for that. And Lord, we come and we bring our bodies and our souls. Lord God, we come and bring our lives and we commit them before your throne. Lord God, Lord, more of you in our lives, less of us, Father. More of you acting in our lives, less of us. We declare, Lord God, your presence. We declare your abundance. We declare your favor over our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going into the rest of the service now, and I encourage you, let's keep loving God. Let's keep doing everything God's called us to do. Amen and amen. Good morning, family, and welcome to Every Nation West Coast. It is good to be with you this morning. It is good to connect. Although it's not in person, although we would love to do that uh, because of the times we can't, but it is good to connect. And we pray that you are well. We had a great time of prayer and fasting in the past week. We pray that it was the same for you. Um, also remember that the devotion continues for two more weeks. 
uh, it is, as it was mentioned last week, we do not stop, we continue seeking God's face and seeking his heart. The office is open between Tuesday and Friday, um, 9.30 and 12. Um, if you like to chat to Pastor Dennis, um, if you need some time of ministry, please do pop in. Um, and I'm sure he'll love to see you. I also remember we launched our new website. Um, it's everynationwestcoast.org. Um, it's a great way to connect. It's a great way to learn about who we are, what we do. So pop in there um, and just see what is happening. Hi, kids. Welcome back to Every Nation Children's Church at West Coast. It's been about three months since we last saw you, and that's been quite a crazy time. We've done some celebrations. We celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ. We've done some holidays, and we've probably done some extraordinary crazy things. But we know that these are really crazy times. And the best thing to do in crazy times is to have God on your side. And so we're here to welcome you back. And we want to just be with you as we take you through the Bible stories just to show you how God has been with people so many times in crazy times, in great times. And we want to show you how you can do that too. <gasps> Tick tock. What time is it? <gasps> It's children's church time, and you know what, TikTok? I am so excited. I am so excited to have my precious little boys and girls at children's church this morning. <gasps> Can we welcome them? Let's call Coco. Coco! Coco! Where are you? <gasps> Hello, boys and girls. We are so excited to have you here. And let's greet everybody with our welcome song. Hello, everybody at Children's Church. How are you? How do you do? Hello, everybody at Children's Church. Hello, hello to you. Whee! Hello, boys and girls. And we're so excited to have you back at Children's Church. And I know I'm sad because I miss you so very much. But remember what we said? God is everywhere and Jesus is always in our hearts and he's right there where you are. So enjoy Children's Church this morning and have an amazing time praising God. And remember to read your Bible, to pray, to listen to mom and dad. And if you do that, you will grow, grow, grow. See you soon. So boys and girls, we are going back on another journey with the Israelites. Do you remember? Oh, they were in the wilderness for so long. And then, wow, God made a way for them to get into the promised land. But anyway, that's what we learned last year. Hey, Toby, do you remember? Mm. Well, if you can't remember, you can always go back and read those Bible stories. But anyway, our last lesson with you last year was all about the Battle of Jericho. Oh, that really cool one where they walk around and around and around and around and eventually they shout. And what happened? <gasps> the walls fell down. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, so now they're in the promised land and we are going on a journey with them in the promised land. And it's not all uh, milk and honey. There's some exciting things that happen. So you're going to find out you need to get your Bibles. You need to get your material that we sent mom and dad and you need to be ready to learn. So are you ready, boys and girls? Oh, oh, one really important thing. So today is a special day for our grade fours to sevens because they're meeting after the church service, they're meeting online together. And I think Auntie Deborah is gonna be telling you something about the Israelites. And next week, mm, I think it might be the grade one to three's turn, but you keep an eye on those emails that we're gonna send mom and dad and be ready for your lessons. So, are you ready? Let's go, Toby. Yes. Yay! Let's go. Um, before we go to our class, I think it's a good idea for us to pray. Are you ready to pray with me? Great. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing opportunity you've given to us, even to study at your word, to study at your feet this morning. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you teach us amazing things. You will lay your hands upon us as we go to our class today, and also you make it an exciting time, your presence. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Um, just a reminder that we have prayers every, every Friday at 5 p.m. on Discord. Please, we are looking forward to seeing you on Discord. Please join and re remember to remind your moms and dads to connect you every Friday at 5 p.m. See you soon. Bye. We, we, we just look at it giving. Um, I'm reminded, especially now that we come out of a week of prayer and fast, that we, we don't give, we are gonna give because it's, it's, it's a way of showing gratitude to God for what he has done in this past week. And secondly, you know, Paul says to us in the book of Philippians that um, we, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But before that, he tells us that um, he has learned to be content when he has plentiful and when he has little. Um, I pray that even as we give, we will learn to be content with what God has blessed us in this season and trusting him more for much more. Amen. Can we pray for the offering? Father, thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you are kind. We thank you, Lord God, that every gift that we give to you, we give to you because you've given us first. And we thank you because you are faithful. We thank you that you will meet us at the point of our needs. Lord, teach us to be content. Teach us, Father God, to be faithful first to you and to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. The announcements. It's so good to see you. Everyone else, we're missing you. So today we're going into the Word, and I'm so excited about our preacher this morning. This is none other than Pastor Jim LaFoon. Pastor Jim is the prophetic leader for the Every Nation Global Family. He's a man that I've met who has a heart after God. He loves God. He listens to God, and then he's bold enough to say what God's saying. So let's go into the Word this morning. Let's listen carefully to what Pastor Jim is going to share. Amen. Father, I just so thank you for the privilege, God, of living today. And Lord, many feel are we coming to our doom. In reality, we're coming to our dawn. God, it's a dawning of a great harvest for the church in America and around the world. I thank you this has not taken you by surprise. What the enemy is meant for evil, you have meant for good, and you're moving, and we're thankful, Lord. Amen. Before I look at this message, I'll go back to December 31st, 2018. I was in my home church there in Brentwood, Tennessee. It was our New Year's service. I was sitting on the front row, and as I was sitting on the front row, the Holy Spirit gave me a series of impressions. I was just a few minutes away from speaking. And as I was waiting there in the front row, the Lord began to speak to me, and I saw New York City. I have no word for it. It was crushed. It was slammed. The financial markets were shaking. And the ripple effect went up the whole nation. California went vertical, and the whole country began to slide off, it seemed to me, into the Atlantic Ocean on the East Coast in New York. I mean, I was shaking on the inside. I have a daughter and her husband in New York City. I have a son, his wife, and three grandchildren in Silicon Valley. And as I saw this, the country just erupt in panic. I heard people screaming um, in my mind, who will save us? What's going to happen? Is this a depression? Is this a recession? Whole country shaking. And I kept hearing the voice of the Lord saying, America is coming to a tipping point. America is coming to a tipping point. 17 months, 17 months. This was recorded that night on YouTube. I spoke at other places as well. 
As I watched, the hands of God came out in New York Harbor and caught the country. The next thing I knew, I was being introduced by the pastor of the church I attend, James Lowe. He said, we have one of our elders, our board members coming to speak tonight. And quite honestly, I mean, I was still trying to pull myself together. As I stood, I began to share with them what I'd seen, that in 17 months, a great shaking was going to come to America. New York would be shaken literally to pieces. Our economy was just going to be stretched and seemingly broken. Many would be afraid. At that moment, it was a Sunday night crowd. I'm in an incredible church. Um, James Lowe, our pastor, is African-American. Um, it's a predominantly African-American church, the site where I am. I love it. I've been there years. And as I was getting ready to speak, the Spirit of the Lord came on me, and I began to prophesy. And I told them, 17 months, when the calendar ticks down to 17 months, there will come a time of terrible division and polarization. In fact, 17 months from that, that day was the killing of Mr. Floyd. And we know that as God's come to heal our nation, and so... Basically, I began to talk about people are going to be afraid, there's going to be division, there's going to be polarization, the hearts of many will fail them, people are going to be into crisis, doomsayers are going to be saying, America's done, it's over, it's going to fracture, and here's how I ended. I said, America will not end in anarchy, America will not end in lasting depression, America, very simply, will end in revival. Now, that word so burdened me in May of 2019 I went into the mountains of Tennessee to pray. And my first day there, the Lord began to speak to me out of the book of Jeremiah. And he said, listen, Jim, he said, a hard time is coming. If you've run, if you've tried to walk with a footman, they've worn you out, it's going to get harder. It's going to get more difficult. Your country is going to become dangerous. I thought, Franklin, Tennessee, outside of Nashville, dangerous? It really made no sense to me, to be honest. The next morning, I woke up and the Holy Spirit said, Here's what's coming into your world. Here's what's coming to the nations of the world. And out of China, I saw a mindless, merciless river of death flow. In my journal that many months ago I wrote, every nation will be affected. Every nation will feel broken. Looking back, I know now that was COVID. But what has God up to? As we come now and vaccines are slowly being released, as we look at 2021, like, what is God's word to the church in this hour? What is God's word? Is We thank God for his mitigation of COVID, but what is God's word in 2021? I'm reminded of what he told me in, in June of 2020, sitting there in my living room. He told me, he said, stand up. And I felt the Holy Spirit come on me. He said, Jim, don't look left. Don't look right. Don't look back. Keep praying. I know you feel like you're walking through the 1960s. I'm dealing with things that weren't finished then, but you're going to walk into the 1970s in another Jesus revolution, a revival that swept out of Orange County and captured my generation. Roughly 30 days later, the LA Times talked about revival on a beach in Orange County. It wasn't a revival, but it was a sign God's up to something. What is God doing around the world? As I've talked to pastors around the world, leaders around the world, there's one thing we all share. But out of this, we're coming into a period of revival, that God is going to use the pain in nations. I'll never forget walking through my house in prayer where I saw the foot of God come down from heaven. And here's what he said. I've not come to crush the earth. I've come to expand my footprint in the nations. I saw the footprint of God over the, over the continents of the world, millions of people coming in. So where are we? What is God saying about the future? A few days ago, God began to speak to me about the future of the church. What are we facing in 2021? What is going to happen as we come out of a, a, into a post-COVID world in the months and months to come? And I'm going to title this message, Our Doom or Our Dawn. Many are saying, well, what's happened to the church? You know, we've been locked down. Have we lost hundreds and thousands, maybe millions of people? Where are we as a church? I'm here to tell you we're not coming into our doom we're coming into our dawn. And I believe we stand at the dawn of an epic harvest. I believe, and I tell you now, at dawn, it's very dark. And right now, it's too dark to see it. But I tell you by the Spirit of God, watch what God is saying. I'm going to start in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 28. It says, when they sang a hymn, they, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, you're going to fall away. A hard time's coming. 
a dark time is coming um, because of this night. For it is written, I'll strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I'll go before you to Galilee. What is Jesus saying? There's a hard time coming. We've been through a dark time. Many leaders around the world have been through their own personal Gethsemane. Many people have, like faith, drained away, wanting to quit, despairing. And Jesus said, you're going to come out of this time, and if you want to find me, where am I going to be? I'm going to be in Galilee. Why is Galilee significant? Galilee is significant because that is where many of the disciples were called. And Jesus says, I'm getting ready to meet you afresh at the point of your calling. I'm getting ready to meet you afresh where you first saw my miracle power. Now, it's interesting, as you go into Matthew 28, we all remember this story. Jesus is at, Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Mary's at the empty tomb. She sees the angels. Then she sees Jesus. And Jesus says this, you go and tell my disciples, meet me in Galilee. Come find me in Galilee. I know they've been in a dark night. I know they've been in brokenness. I know they've been hard, but I'm waiting for them in Galilee. May I tell you by the Spirit, Jesus is waiting for us in our Galilee, the place we're called, the place he touched us, the things he told us before this dark night descended on the world, where he met us. And I tell you this, he's calling his church back to a Galilee moment, a fresh appearance of him, a time where he is going to come we're going to hear his voice freshly in the midst of this darkness for the harvest of a lifetime. Now, it's interesting, at this point, they were in Jerusalem. It was roughly a 75, depending. Today, it'd be 90 miles in highways. Those days, about a 75-mile journey. They were a three- or four-day journey away from a miraculous moment that would set the course for Pentecost and beyond. Now, when you look in John chapter 20, and we'll start there, we find the disciples were a little reluctant to head to Galilee. And as you come into the book of John, um, chapter 20, verse 19, it says on the evening of the first day, Mary had already come back and said, listen, Jesus is risen. He's waiting for you in Galilee. We've just got to get down to Galilee. He's going to meet us. The Bible says they were locked up for fear. We've been locked down. We've been quarantined. And the problem is when you've been besieged for a long period of time, when you've been quarantined for a long period of time, it begins to affect your mind. And even when that siege ends, you keep a siege mindset. Many of us are just locked up on the inside. Our faith is locked up. We're locked down. We really can't imagine a world without this. And here are the disciples with a word from Jesus to go to Galilee, locked up, locked down. You know where the church is right now? Locked up in many places with fear. Doors locked, feeling hopeless, feeling despairing. A new day is dawning, but we're locked up. Now, it's interesting, Jesus appears in your midst. No matter how locked up you are in your heart, your family, your finances, this Jesus is stepping into our churches. This Jesus is stepping into our ministry. And what is he doing? He's recommissioning us. He's, he's proving, I'm risen from the dead. See these marks. And we know what happened. He breathed on them. He commissioned them. There's a fresh baptism in God's love and power coming on the church, coming on you and your home, coming on you wherever you find yourself. Wherever you are watching this message, wherever you are in the world, it's for every nation, not just the United States. God says, I'm unlocking you. I'm unlocking you. Now, you would think they would basically run to Galilee, but when we come into verse 24, seven days have passed. Seven or eight days, another week has passed. They're still locked up. And Thomas said, I'm not going anywhere till I see him. This has been so hard. I've really got to see Jesus for myself. Right? And I think many of you are there like Thomas. You say, like, okay, I really believe I just need a fresh touch from Jesus. You say, Pastor, I'm still locked up. If Jesus could just some, here's the amazing thing. Even though they were disobedient, they hadn't yet gone to Galilee. 
Jesus has come to them. Jesus comes right through the locked door and appears to Thomas and touches him. No matter where you find yourself, how locked up you may feel, no matter what you're going through, no matter what city or what nation of the world you're in, no matter how hard it's been, my Jesus is coming into your quarantine. My Jesus is coming into your lockdown city, your lockdown nation, your locked down community, your locked down church. He's saying, see my hands, see my feet. I've defeated death. I've defeated you. I'm here, but I'm waiting for you in Galilee. We're coming into a time of astonishing commission. We're coming into a time of harvest. It is so easy to put our hopes in political power. It's so easy to put our hopes in humans. And I appreciate the right human leadership, but only God can change the human heart. Only God can change a nation. Now we come into John 21. It says, after this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples. It says, and later in John, this would be the third time. He's come through locked doors two times. And now they've come to the Sea of Galilee. Now they've come to the place where a number of them had fished. Now they had come, beloved, to the place where many of them were called back in Galilee. Seeing Jesus two times, it's interesting, not all the disciples even show up in this story. It's not easy to come out of the period of darkness. It's just not easy to come out of the period of brokenness. When your faith is down and you're wondering, where is God in this city? Some of you, you feel like, man, my city's destitute. My nation's broken. Maybe you're sitting there in America and you're going to get a vaccine. What about us? What would God say to us? And they get down there and they don't see him, and they're by the Sea of Tiberias. This is where the Luke 5 miracle took place. This is where the miracle of the catch took place in spite of their unbelief. They had an amazing catch. It's where Peter had been called out of fishing into apostleship, but also the net had broken. Symbolic of a great catch is going to come, but you're not ready right now. And I'm going to bring you through a series of events Yes, there'll be revelation. Yes, there'll be a miracle. But there will be a dark night moment that you'll come out of the out of. And when you do, one day that net won't break. And finally, they don't know what to do. They can't find him. And they decide, Simon Peter called the twin Nathaniel, calls some of the disciples and says, I'm going fishing. Scholars debate, are they trying to catch most? Many think they're just discouraged, okay? We don't really see Jesus down here. Let's kind of go back into business. What's going to happen? I mean, is there really any change? Jesus says, let's go out, and they begin to fish. And they all went and just, they said they went out and got into the boat there in John 21, but that night they caught nothing. Many feel like in this dark night past, we haven't really caught anything. Pastors all over America are saying, I mean, how many people do I really have? I've talked to leaders around the world, many at the point of quitting, like, Pastor, where's my church? I went into this with hundreds or thousands. Now I don't really know. I've talked to leaders and say, man, I've never had so much warfare. I've never had so much despair. Ministers just been crushed, many of them. Fished all night. I've been in this dark night. I'm not even sure who's in my church. I've been in this dark night, Pastor Jim. I'm not sure what's in my business and what I have left. Just as the day was breaking, oh, it was dark, but it was not the doom, it was the dawn. And the church in America and the church around the world, we stand at the dawn of a new era of God's power. We stand at the dawn of a new moment. In the darkness, feeling like we've caught nothing, we really can't even count. Who can figure all the ways to count? What does it mean there were viewers or there were homes? We have no idea. And the many who have tied their equilibrium to the growth of their church have fallen into deeper sorrow. But it said Jesus stood in the darkness. He stood. And just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Hard to see him right now for many of us, isn't it? 
You see, when you live in an external period of darkness for a long time, it begins to seep in your soul. It begins to blind you and you can't see it and you lose sight of God's promises. I know some of you are like, Pastor, my city's destitute. My businesses are just broken. I don't know about my own finances. Jesus is out there. We just can't see him yet. Not because we're doomed, but because it's the dawn. A new day is upon us. It's just too dark to see. He's standing on the shore of your home. He's standing on the shore of your church. He's standing on the shore of your nation. He's brought you to Galilee. And he asked this question. He said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. Children, in this dark night, have you caught anything? In this dark COVID night, economic night, time of pressure and pain and division and hurting. And for those of you in America, you should not just think that, well, we've had all the division. No, in nation after nation, things have been shaking, whether it's ethnic, whether it's by class, whether it's religious, whether it's national, nations are shaking. Have you caught anything? We fished all night. We think we've caught nothing. They don't realize how close they were to harvest. May I tell you, Jesus has been at work in the darkness far more than you even realize. Have you caught anything? We've caught nothing. Many feel like, Lord, we can't really tell what we've caught. I mean, we've had a lot of online engagement through the Internet, but we don't really know what's there and what's not. We don't really know. The greatest churches in the world really have no idea who's still with them and who's there. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. Fishing boats in those days were 12 foot long, 6 foot wide. He said, you just make a little adjustment. You just, you just throw the net 6 feet. Now, give me a break. With a school of fish just on the right side, probably not. Jesus says, I just need a step of faith. I just need you to fish again, because underneath under the ceiling of this pain, there is a mighty harvest. You can't see it. Beneath the COVID, beneath the statistics, beneath oh, how many really believe, what state, what nation, God's moving. Cast the net. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of the fish. All of a sudden, the net began to just bulge. They thought, this is like Luke 5. We've never seen such a quantity. I tell you now by the Holy Spirit, there's a harvest of quantity coming. Jesus speaks in the darkness. Do you have any fish? No, we don't. Yes, you do. Keep fishing. Watch what I do. Now watch this. They begin to haul it, and then that, that disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. During this time, there have been many Peters who've been broken. They've wanted to quit. Leaders at the point of despair. Some of the greatest leaders in local churches just, I've had it. Small group leaders, pastors, staff members, people. I can't, I'm moving out, I'm just done. But I'll tell you as this darkness ends, the Peters of the world are diving back into the harbor. Those who've wanted to quit. Those who've wanted to deny, those who said it's just too hard, where is God? They're diving back in. They're dressing themselves again and diving back in. And we will see a diving back in of people we think have lost, people we think have just quit, the people who've been bruised and hurt in the division, discouraged in the COVID. There is a holy diving back in for the Peters, and you better embrace them because they have the strength to pull in the harvest. As they came... So he put his garment, threw himself in. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, but a hundred yards off. I mean, I tell you, we pull the harvest to the playing field. If I use an American football analogy, a hundred yards, here we are. We're back on the field. A harvest is coming that's titanic. Now, when they got out on the land... They saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it. What's this about? 
Jesus said, you don't think you were catching anything? I've been catching the whole time. Come and see. What is Jesus saying? The whole time you think you've caught nothing. The whole time you can't even keep track of what I'm doing in your church or your ministry. I've been like caught fish. I've prepared them. You see, brothers and sisters, Jesus has been fishing the whole time. In nation after nation, he's been catching precious humans and you don't even know it. I believe by the thousands and hundreds of thousands, he's visited, he's touched, he's drawn. They had to be stunned. We're just pulling in this harvest. And there's Jesus. I got fish. I had fish, but you needed to fish. And he says this, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net 100 yards. There are Peters coming back in the church. There's young generations, sons, daughters of pastors and leaders coming back into the church. Those that seemingly were lost in the darkness. People that have just left churches. And those Peters with the strength of fresh consecration will do what 11 other, 10 other disciples in a boat had trouble doing. They'll haul it 100 yards. There's a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to draw a catch. And it says it was full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were many, the net was not torn. Listen to me, beloved, and I'm telling you this. This is not merely a harvest of quantity. This is a harvest of quality. Our Jesus is bringing in big fish, called fish, powerful fish. The harvest we have coming is not just in quantity. It is in quality. And the net was not torn. We'll come out of this stronger, not weaker. We'll walk out of this having met Jesus more fresh, committed, ready. And the nets are not going to break as we pull this harvest in. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was the third time. May I tell you, he's preparing breakfast for you at the dawn of a new age. He's cooked the very meal you need to fellowship with him. He's cooked the very food you need to strengthen you. This was the third visit. This was the third revelation. What am I saying? We've not come to our doom. It's not the end of church as we've known it. We've not lost all these people. In fact, we've gained far more than we've lost in the end as the months and months to come will tell. This is our dawn. You see, dawn and doom feel the same because it's really dark and we're not sure what's going to break. But in the darkness of the new day, my Jesus stands. He's calling you back to your Galilee. He's calling the church back to the place. Beloved, I appreciate voting and voting my conscience and all many nations hearing this. You're all governed different ways. But let me tell you, if you're worried about a part of your nation being changed, pray and plant churches. Only the church can change the human heart. I appreciate godly laws. I appreciate it all and believe in it. But only the church can change the human heart. Oh, no. I'm not facing do. I'm facing the dawn. And my Jesus has come through the locked doors of churches. My Jesus has come through the locked doors of businesses. And even more, he's come into the locked up hearts by fear. Wherever you are hearing this message, in America and around the world, welcome to the dawn. Welcome to your Jesus. He's walking through your locked doors, breathing on you. He's walking into your locked up heart, demonstrating who he is. But he's waiting for you in Galilee, waiting for you to grab the net, waiting for you to venture out, waiting for you to invite. 
He's never stopped fishing during this time. And in the darkness, the harvest gathers in every nation of the world, not just America. God's up to something. It's not the doom of the church. It's the dawn of the church. Now, Jesus, I thank you. You're standing in the darkness speaking to us. And I hear your voice. Have you any fish? Oh, no, we fished all night. You probably laughed and thought, I've been catching all night. I'm ready for you. I ask you to come through locked doors, locked hearts, locked up cities, locked up nations. Come, Lord Jesus. Come by your spirit. Come by your power. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a powerful word and a word in season. Three things stood out to me from this word. Number one, he said, no matter how locked up you are, Jesus steps into the room. And I want to tell you that that's speaking to you. No matter how locked up you are in your finances, in your workplace, in your home, in your relationships, even in your fears, Jesus steps into your room. Let's trust that he's going to step in and he's going to break you out of those things. Secondly, what stood out to me, it's, he said that Jesus has been at work in the darkness. And so God's doing a new thing. He's been at work and I'm excited. Let's look with excitement to see what God's going to do. Lastly, he is waiting for you to take hold of, to grab the net. He requires something of us, and that's an obedience to his word. That's a stepping out and walking in that obedience. Let's grab the nets in this week to come. Let's trust God for opportunities to speak into people's lives, to bring God's love into the lives of the people around us, to show his love in our families, in our community. God bless you as you go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that your word is true and yes and amen. And Lord, as we go, I pray for your blessing. I pray for your sovereign hand over each of our lives. And I pray that we will go and walk this word out. And Lord, we do pray that you will step into the room, into every room where we feel locked up, Father. And Lord, we pray for your presence like never before. We pray for your love flowing through us like never before. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you do need prayer on you or you do want prayer after the service, follow the link on the screen and we'll be there to pray for you. Have an awesome Sunday. God bless. Amen.